Let's now move on to objective three. Why do firms diversify? Well, there are three primary reasons that firms diversify. They are value creation reasons, value neutral reasons, and value reducing reasons. Value creating diversification arises when a firm has more than 30% of its sales in its dominant business and its business are relating. That's, create, that's classified as related diversification, as you know. We've also talked about what um, related, unrelated diversification is, which I'll mention in a moment. In relation diversification, the reason, what you're trying to achieve from your diversification or how you're trying to add value through your diversification is by either having economies of scope, you're sharing activities between the different parts of the company, or you're transferring core competencies from one part of the company to another part of the company, from one business in the company to another business in the company. Second reason you diversify for value creating reasons in related diversification is market power. Market power is about blocking competitors because you have multi-point competition or vertical integration. So we can see that um, we've got Qantas expanding and operating Jetstar is a multi-point piece of competition. It's, and so they're trying to create it more, compete at more than one level of the market, full service uh, discount airline. But we also see that Qantas shares activities between those two companies, the two parts of its business, and transfers the things it learns from one part to another part. You know, it learns more efficient ways to deal with customer service. It learns more efficient ways to deal with the relationship between um, the the pilots and the flight crew and the scheduling systems. So there's a number of different ways that they can add value through um, ultimate, um, uh, through their related diversification strategy. Don't know why my phone went off then, just did. Maybe I said a word <laughs> the set, uh, that keyed it in the search. Just because you diversify doesn't mean that you're likely to be you're necessarily successful, of course. One of the reasons that Virgin bought Tiger was to create multi-point competition as it tried to change its strategy so it could compete head to head, head um, with Qantas. It, however, didn't share at, um, um, operations between the different parts of the business. When we look at a company like Woolworths, Woolworths Australia, we've already seen a little video on Woolworths structure. When we look at Woolworths, well, Woolworths owns supermarkets. It expanded into a into a related area um, of um, of um, service stations. Those service stations it's now divested of, but it still is supplying the shops at the service stations. It owns a range of other business businesses in its alcohol and liquor area. It's entering the market by to compete directly with um, 7-Eleven by creating Woolworths Metro. Uh, it's bought companies that supply it through um, companies that distribute pro it, its products. It's vertically integrating so um, to compete with its um, competitors and it is uh, by buying suppliers, buying different um outlets and it's moving across the marketplace as well, sharing competencies between the different parts of its business. In Woolworths Liquor, for example, a significant proportion of their stock, what you think may be branded products, are in fact products that are owned by Woolworths and sell in competition to other branded products products. If you don't believe me, go and look in the back of a wine bottle or a beer bottle and find out whether or not their um, the winery address is on Wellington Road. Wellington Road at Mulgrave is Woolworths Regional uh, Head Office in Victoria. 
uh, its distribution center in Victoria, a lot of the home brand wines have that as the winery location. There's a requirement that you have a head office location listed. So you can find these different brands of wine that are in fact just Woolworths. So value creating through related diversification is done by economies of scope or by trying to seek market power. Economy of scope again by sharing activities across the different businesses or transferring core competence and skills. Market power is by blocking competitors through multi-point competition or through vertical integration, buying your distributors, buying your suppliers. Unrelated diversification is when firms are expanding into areas where there is no clear business relationship between the different parts, or there may be a limited business relationship, but no, it's not really what you're trying to achieve. You do that through efficient internal market allocation. So financial economies gain through efficient internal market allocation and business responsibility uh, restructuring. So you may have a firm that is a particular tire that has a lot of free cash, you take that free cash and you invest it in another not, not free cash flow and you invest that in another business to create a new business. You may be in an older area or a sustainable area where you've blocked from further growth. You invest in a new business or a different business location. You may be purchasing, for example, an underperforming business, knock off the edges, knock off the things that aren't performing well, improve the things that are performing well, and then use that that achievement to sell that business off or to operate it to expand your profitability. It's about managing money across the different components of the business rather than actually necessarily managing the businesses themselves. A little bit of mixture there because if you're business restructuring, often you're managing the business. But the intention is that you have an unrelated diversified company that you are providing finance for that you're controlling. TPG, um, the um, uh, uh, private equity group, as distinct from the TPG that offers the internet, is a unrelated diversification company that buys different businesses and tries to achieve financial economies th um, through restructuring. There's an argument that West Farmers, even though they've moved a little bit away from that, has historically been an unrelated diversified company that buys businesses um, using the finance from its free cash flow, runs those businesses successfully until the time they can sell them out, sell them off, um, creating equity and wealth for their shareholders. They did that with Coles, for example. So let's look at how we can summarize those value creating strategies related on um, whether you're trying to achieve operational relatedness or corporate relatedness. If you have, a, if you have low operational related relationships and low corporate relationships, so low related relationship between the business and low transfer of skills between the business through corporate head, headquarters, you'll probably find, need to follow an unrelated, probably you do, need to follow an unrelated diversification strategy and seek financial um, economies. If you have a lot of ability to share operational related, relatedness between the businesses, but less ability to transfer skills into the business from head office, so the head office doesn't have the skills to add value to the company, you need to follow a vertical integration market power or a, um, a strategy seeking um, related constrained diversification as your corporate strategy. If you have a high ability to provide um, skills from corporate head office, but low corporate relatedness between the businesses, you follow an economy of scopes, so you're transferring skills into businesses, you're getting the businesses to operate separately and achieve and perform, as distinct organizations. And finally, if you have the ability to transfer skills through corporate head or office and operationally relate um, and, and have uh, abilities to share the operations, it's very rare. You can get both operational and corporate relationships um, and you follow that strategy. Now, that's rare because quite often uh, you get diseconomies of scope 
you get the comp the, as you as you get broader and broader across a number of different marketplaces, a number of different industries, a number of different businesses, it creates conflict um, about being too big, too complex, and the scope of operations don't give you the economies of scope you're trying to seek. Okay, so that's objective three. We're going to come back and look at objective four in which we describe how firms create value by using a related diversification strategy in more detail um, in the next recording.